just made quite a spontaneous decision to do a weekly vlog this week so welcome back here we go <laughs> that's not technically true because it was always my intention to vlog this week but originally today was supposed to be some exciting plans and because we are now in a national period of mourning um the queen passed away on thursday this is the monday after that um both of those things have been cancelled and scaled back so i thought you know what we'll do a vlog from home instead i've got a few nice plans but i'm gonna do something a little bit different with this one i'm gonna take you through my week but i'm gonna have a focus on i i hate the phrase self-care i really don't like it i think it's overused but there's going to be more of an emphasis on the things i do to look after myself and to stay happy when perhaps that isn't coming as easily as usual I feel like things are a bit topsy-turvy for a lot of people right now for a lot of different reasons. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't share on social media and the last few months have been a little bit trickier than usual. Um, so I'm really trying to focus on finding the joy and hanging on to it wherever I can and that's why I've got some nice plans in place. In line with that, it's Monday lunchtime, I'm going to the cat cafe. <laughs> I've done some work this morning but I texted my friend Tom and while he's on his lunch break we're going to go and spend time, some quality time, with some quality quality cats. <laughs> Sometimes when I can't figure out what I need to help me feel better the answer is probably going to be cats so I feel like this is a good call all around. I'm a bit early for my bus so I thought I'd just say while I remember one of the cool things that was supposed to happen today is the launch of the Decode ME research today. And that launch has still happened, but in light of recent events, it has had to be dialed down and we've had to rethink the comms and stuff. But by the time you're watching this, data collection will be beginning and it'll be underway. So if you haven't already signed up as a participant, I'll leave the website link down below. You can find all the information you need on there as well. It is exciting. Again, it feels a little bit muted because of the things we've had to change and stuff, but how amazing that that study is finally underway and this could be the beginning of making a real difference. The other thing is slightly harder to be chipper about because today was supposed to be the Disability Power 100 event in London and yeah, I'd been looking forward to that for a really long time, but it's been postponed and we've already got the new date. So luckily I could change my trains and my hotel and I've not lost out on any money. So all is well and we've got it there to look forward to in the future instead. <laughs> was absolutely delightful. They're looking to rehome three triplet cats next month and it took every ounce of strength in my body not to put my name down. And then something really lovely happened on the way home actually. I was waiting for my bus which was delayed because of course it was and I got talking to an 85 year old man sat next to me. Um, quite random how it all happened but it turns out that he had been having treatment in the same place where my family has spent a lot of time this year. <laughs> So that was really lovely as well, just nice, just nice when things like that happen, little things like that happen. He was telling me all about his life as well, he had some very interesting stories. He used to work in a hospital, he was telling me about Gregory Peck's intimate medical issues, it was a grand old time. <laughs> my intention was to come home and go to bed for a rest, but my inbox said no. But it's not bad tasks to be fair, it's nice tasks, I can do them all from the sofa really, so I'm just gonna get a drink, have a snack, get myself nice and cosy and just do the bits I need to do. Hello, happy Wednesday. Wasn't my intention to skip Tuesday and jump to here, but here we are. Yesterday I thought was gonna be a typical day. I had a medical appointment in the morning and I had charity sector hours that I needed to do. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll do that in the afternoon and it'll be fine. Went to the appointment, absolutely floored me. I got back and it was that feeling where it feels like there's the big thick fog and you just can't get through it. So I did manage to get a few tiny really light bits done. I had some editing to do, some proofreading to do, but I did have to prioritise rest. And this might sound silly, but I was quite proud of myself for that because it's so different for everybody. But for me, the hard bit has never been motivating myself to work because I do 
that plane sounded worryingly close to my roof. <laughs> yeah, I'm always motivated to work because I genuinely love what I do. I love the feeling of working. I love taking steps towards an outcome. I just really enjoy all of it. And often I jeopardize other areas of my life to prioritize work. Oh my God. Taking the time to rest doesn't always come easily, but I'm really glad that I did that yesterday because it means that today's not too bad now and I've spent the morning catching up on the bits that I needed to do yesterday. So all is well. So nice things that have happened today. Really enjoyed the writing thing I was working on this morning. Had some good progress on some other projects. I'm dressed in loungewear that makes me look and feel like a marshmallow and I support this wholeheartedly. I've moved somewhere quieter. I can still hear it, but hopefully that's better. One thing that I really do enjoy doing is paint by numbers, which might seem a little bit random, but I've really been enjoying just having something to work on. I, I should say as well, you know when people say they're not good at crafts and then they do a craft and they're amazing at it? It's very much not like that with me. When I say I can't do crafts, I don't think I've got a crafty bone in my body. So paint by numbers. I'm not very skilled at it, but I do find it quite satisfying. So I sit on the floor down there, I put a podcast in and I just do a little bit of dabbling with the paint. <laughs> it might be aimed at small children, but I enjoy it. <laughs> oh, let me mention as well, the podcast I'm listening to at the minute, if there's anybody else out there who was also Dan's mom's trash growing up, it's not an unproblematic program, but I do indulge in it, which is, which is bad. But if you watch Dan's mom's growing up, there's now a podcast that's called Back to the Bar and it's Christy and Kelly, which are two of the dance moms, and they essentially drink and tell you all the behind the scenes from all the episodes and all the stuff that the show didn't air. That's another one of my guilty pleasures. I do really enjoy it. There've been times where I've been on my own in my flat and I've actually laughed out loud at some of the stuff. So that gives you an indication of what it's like. A new episode came out yesterday, so I'm gonna get my AirPods, put that on and do a little bit of paint by numbers. <laughs> series of Bake Off start yesterday. I only managed to watch half of it yesterday but that's okay because I'm gonna go and watch the other half with my lunch. I've actually got something nice to eat with it this time as well. If you, oh my goodness, if you haven't tried these, they're the Co-op Grow, their own brand dark chocolate chip cookies, dark chocolate chunk cookies. Oh my goodness, if you put one on a plate, put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds, it tastes like it's fresh out of the oven and it gives me life. <laughs> I try and only buy them as a treat because otherwise I could very easily get addicted like oh my god look at that. I had some good news last week, some really good news, some really good work news and I haven't really felt like I can celebrate, just things have been a bit weird and I haven't really felt joy, it's not. It's just not sunk in. So I thought you know what, I'll buy myself some cookies as a little well done <laughs> gift to myself, um, not that you ever need an excuse to get the cookies. I'm just gonna sit here and indulge and that will be my celebration. <laughs> Approximately 24 minutes I'm doing something kind of big and kind of scary so I'm just trying to wake myself up a bit I need to get my brain in gear and it's also going to be 90 minutes on one call um, so good luck to me <laughs> don't know why I'm sat on the floor here don't usually sit here straight back in the comfy clothes now that I've done the thing the second I've done whatever I need to do straight back in the comfy clothes or I don't feel like myself I don't know if anybody else has that as well but I've just got here I'm not, I know for a fact I'm not going to be able to multitask hang on <laughs> I was hoping these would come today. I've got some of my absolute favourite Epsom salts. I had these in my bath and they're one of the only things that helps me on like a really bad day. <laughs> yeah, they're from Better You and they're quite affordable actually. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I've still got a discount code. So if I have, I'll find that and I will leave it linked below. Oh yeah, but these are lovely. I ran out um, on short notice and I forgot to order them for ages. So I'm genuinely excited about these. <laughs> I'm actually doing all right energy wise, which is a relief after that 90 minute meeting, but I do have quite a lot to get through today. So I'll probably leave this here, but I've just made really lovely plans for tomorrow evening that I'm already so excited about. So I'll, um, I'll probably see you then. 
I'm off to see Jacqueline Wilson tonight. This is so silly. I've had to have a bit of a word with myself today to calm myself down. This feels like Christmas Day to me. I spotted on Instagram a while back that Jacqueline Wilson was doing an event in York this evening. I'm not even entirely sure what the event is, but that feels like a once in a lifetime kind of an opportunity for me. So I bought a ticket, tried to coerce all my friends into coming with me. Most of my local friends aren't that bookish, so they weren't having any of it. But I have found people to come with me, thanks to the powers of Instagram, disability Instagram. <laughs> I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around the fact that in a few hours, I'll be in the same room as Jacqueline Wilson. I don't know how busy it's going to be, but... Oh my goodness. I, I think I have... Oh, I'm pretty sure I've got Jacqueline Wilson to thank for my love of reading. I was, like many kids, I was absolutely obsessed with her books growing up. And the fact that she's had such a brilliant, such a long and such a brilliant writing career. Oh my goodness. And she happens to be in York this evening. And you can tell this is a big deal because I've actually straightened my hair and straightening, oh my goodness, straightening hair like this is absolutely exhausting. It's ridiculous. I am gonna, I intend to chop it all off soon, but I'm donating it and I'm just trying to hold on a little bit longer and grow it just a little bit longer before I do it. Very much easier said than done. <laughs> I tell you what though, it's been a bit of a rubbish day. Every, by, my entire instinct when things don't go well is to just squash it down and cover it up and I'm trying really hard not to do that but that's a very difficult thing to unlearn when you've done it all your life but one thing I have found that is really helping at the minute is simply having plans to look forward to and I appreciate that's a position of privilege to even be able to say that in a life with chronic illness the fact that I can even make plans and do these things would have been unthinkable a few years ago so that's definitely not lost on me but it does make a big difference having things to look forward to and they don't have to be big things they can be small things as well happy friday lovely sunny evening lovely lovely plans to look forward to so let's do it to forgive me filming this in bed it's quite a bad pain day but I just thought I'd tell you a bit about Jacqueline Wilson because it was so awesome the event itself was only an hour long and she just sat on stage and she talked a bit about her life and her writing she read extracts from two of her newest books and I'm really glad she did that actually because her newest book is Project Fairy but I didn't realise that she's also recently written a book called The Primrose Railway Children, which is a more modern retelling of The Railway Children, which is probably one of my favourite children's classics. I did end up buying a copy of that as well. Oh my gosh, it's got such a gorgeous cover. And after the event, she did a signing, so um, she signed a couple of books as well. And while we were in the queue, we actually got talking to her publicist as well, which was really cool because I've always thought that being a publicist would be such a cool job. Because we were at the back of the queue, we're... Back of the queue? <laughs> of the queue my brain's gone my brain's fully gone <laughs> because we were at the back of the queue and we were having a chat with her we got to kind of have a bit of a chat with Jacqueline Wilson as well we got to take a picture with her and it was really lovely they were both asking a bit about York and stuff like that um she asked about being a book blogger because the public publicist was talking about that I can't imagine being that starstruck with anybody else I feel like I could meet a celebrity who's a big name and in the in the public eye these days and not be as starstruck as I was with Jacqueline Wilson like we walked into the event and the second I saw her I was like oh my goodness have some chill it was very hard to have the chill <laughs> Oh, I need to put, oh my gosh, my arm's hurting, hang on. I was half expecting it would mostly be children in the audience, but it was so cool because there was such a broad age range there. So there were people like me who've grown up loving her books. There were also parents and people older than me. And there were kids there who love her books as much now as we did back then. And I was just sat there thinking, this is so special. Imagine having a career where your words are touching people and making people as excited about reading. 20, 30 years later, it, it's just incredible. And you know, she took questions from the audience and the way she spoke to each child and really made each child feel special. You just know that that's the kind of thing that's really gonna stay with them. And it, it without sounding really cheesy, that was really special to experience. So as you might be able to tell, absolutely loved it. I'm so glad I went. And honestly, if she does an event near you or if there's an author who you love and you think, oh, I'm a bit on the fence, I don't know whether to go or not. I really encourage you to go if you can because it was, yeah, I really loved it. It was really special.
Just in case I'm too tired to wrap this vlog up later, just wanted to say thank you for watching. Bit random, not even entirely sure what this video is going to be. I don't know, I suppose maybe it's just a little bit, a little reminder to do something. Just be a little bit kind to yourself, especially if you're having a bit of a rough time at the minute. Um, I hope there's something in your day that you've been able to enjoy today. And actually, if anybody does make it this far, it would be really lovely. My hand had a little spasm then, sorry. <laughs> If anybody has watched this far, maybe it'd be nice in the comments, just let me know something that's made you smile recently, something that's made you happy or brought a little bit of joy. I don't know if anyone will do that, but I thought I'll put it out there just in case. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. You can subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.